If you enjoyed this fancy Stratocaster, you're going to love what's in this box. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to review a very similar guitar, but in the other Fender shape. No, we're not talking about a Jazzmaster, I'm sorry. This is a awesome Telecaster that a viewer also put on consignment with me, so you can find it for sale on my website and Reverb if you're interested in being the next owner of it. Now, as far as a documented history of when they started carved top tellies, I honestly couldn't find a lot of information on that as compared to the Stratocaster, so we're just going to appreciate this as the master built piece it is. Oh, oh, okay, wow. I understand it better now. You guys gotta remember, I took these in on consignment based on like one photo. That Stratocaster, I thought it had these weird slash marks in the fretboard as a cool inlay pattern before I realized that they were just reflections. But I'm seeing a lot of things that I didn't know to expect on this cool telly. So first off, the photos were very deceiving. This is not a carved top telly. It's just a regular flat top one. We've got some sort of a really cool flame top here. If I had to guess, it looks like mahogany, but we'll have to figure that out later. It's two pieces, like we'll get all the details dimensions on the workbench. This is just my first impressions of it. I just thought it was going to be a matching one to that blue one because we've got the TV Jones pickups in this as well. It's that same hard tail, but this time it's in gold. But besides the pickups, the next thing that makes it unique is uh, no pick guard at all. Hey, our toggle switch isn't down here. It's up here, Les Paul style, so kind of troublemaker-like. Do we have any fancy electronics? Nope, not like the Stratocaster. But this is a very Gretschy orange color, right? Look what the binding is. It's actually a drum shell material, perloid. <laughs> That's really fancy. It works well with this finish. Now I'm getting like a Chet Atkins country gentleman like vibes. But my friends, look at the rigid flaming on this neck. Like, holy cow. If the neck has this much movement with this particular finish style, just imagine if it was full gloss. That is a very nice piece of wood here. But now that I'm looking at the back, that's not even a top at all. They were playing a trick on me again. It's just a straight up flamey body in general, and they played it off on the top and made it look like it because it was bound. And it's also one of those strange tellies that has a comfort cut on the back, but is not set neck or anything extremely crazy. But it is string through. That's fun. Our fretboard's not looking half bad either with real mother of pearl dot inlays. That just looks strange on a Fender, but it makes it fancy. The Fender logo almost looks like it's done up like that too, but it's just a reflective silver color. Well, looking at our traveler guide here, I was fooled again. It's apparently Alder. So let's just go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench to take a look at all these specs together and figure out what this thing even is. It's certainly fun. After throwing this one on the workbench, this is really similar to a Cabernita Tele, or the Cabernita Especial. We had documented a parts caster one that Sarah Ray had painted once. Now this one, we've got the full two pickups, and we don't have any type of pick guard on it, so it's not exactly the same, but that's a really good way to sum up what this is since it has the TV Jones pickups. But we've got the TV Jones branding on the outside of both of the pickups. They're done up in gold. It's the Powertron set in the neck, and the same one in our bridge. But I get circuit readings of 7.67k ohms in the bridge, 4.93 in the neck, and the middle just for fun, 3.02. As far as our neck pickup route, you can see DG in there. That's the initials of our master builder, Dennis Galuska. Bridge pickup cavity looks more of the same. You can see some buffing compound left in it. But it does confirm for me that this is just a straight up body. There is no top. So it's just two pieces of flamed alder put together. That just happens to look nice all the way through that we can give a top effect using the moto binding, as they call it, which is short for mother of toilet seat. It's just a long standing joke because there were some old toilets, I think back in the 60s that looked like this. They call this a hardtail Stratocaster bridge. So you got individual saddles, not the vintage style though. Those are slightly more modern. And we just have regular electronics here, master volume, master tone. With again, our toggle switch up here. The switch itself is a little bit different. It's kind of a large brass cylinder, or at least that's what I thought it was. It appears to be a brass switch tip on top of a regular one. It's kind of cool how it gives the illusion. It's just all one piece. An Atelier tele without a pick guard is a little bit strange, but it kind of works for this one. So you get to see all of our cool figuring. Moving on from our alder body, we've got our maple neck. It was only graded as 3A maple, but my goodness, I, I would rate it higher than that. This has some extreme figuring to it. It has a very 3D-like effect to it, particularly on the back. But you've got mother of pearl side marker inlays. You can tell this is just a straight up maple neck. There's not a separate fretboard extension for it. 
Your main markers on the top are also mother of pearl, and besides the flame figuring, you get the wood grain, and this is like a semi-satin finish. So it still has that really soft feel to it, but it's not full-on glossy gloss. Pretty much the only flaw in this neck that I see is there's a small mineral deposit right there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I just thought I'd point it out, but it gives it character. And we've got 22 medium jumbo style frets. You have the typical 25 and a half inch scale length. But it actually has a compound fretboard radius, starts at nine and a half inches, but then ends at 12. Other than that, we got a bone nut that measures 1.69 inches, which increases to 2.05 by the 12th. And a first fret neck depth of 0.92 inches, and that increases to 0.98. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Fender calls this their large C neck profile shape, and so far I'm really liking it. It's not obnoxiously big, but it's got a good roundedness to it. Moving on to our headstock, pretty basic stuff here. We've got that silver Fender logo, which is looking cool. And unlike that Stratocaster we recently reviewed, this is just the continuation of the maple neck. We didn't have to do any type of veneer, but you've got modern style golden tuners that are actually spurzels that we'll look at on the back. And we have the biflex truss rod, so you can adjust it up here with a single string tree. After stringing the back up, I'm going to say I'm not a big fan of these particular spurzel tuners. They're a little bit harder to turn than some other sets that I've used in the past, but they do function. Moving on to the back, we can appreciate that flamed alder body, but again, it is two pieces, it's got a center seam. This one has a reverse chevron pattern to it, but it doesn't quite get met up. The other side continues the same way, so it just kind of gives you like a slanted flamed effect. But you've got your comfort cut over here, and uh, yeah, they had to route this like a Les Paul for our toggle switch. So kind of troublemaker in style there. Interesting that there's absolutely no finish right there. Then here's our main control channel. But again, no finish on the rim. So you can see the wiring job that they did. If you wanted fancy electronics in here, the pickups are for conductor. They just taped off the ones that they didn't need. So you just have to put a push-pull pot in there to make full use of that. But stock from the factory, this is how they did it. We've got a barrel style output jack and regular strap buttons in our normal telly positions. The only major blemish I see on this one is there's like a slight lift in the finish right there. It could also be a ding or it might be a factory defect. I'm not entirely too sure. And I suppose on a similar note, you can see that the finish is kind of lifted by the ferrules that the strings are going through here. I'd imagine one day that has the potential to flake, but right now it seems secure. This is a urethane finish, complete gloss, and then you have the more satin feel. So to put it into other words, it just feels like what you normally associate a satin finish with that's kind of been buffed up a little bit, but yet it still has the regular satin sheen. So it allows the flame to still dance, maybe not as much as a full gloss, but still maintains the things that players like about the satin finish feeling. Then we've got our walnut skunk stripe running up the center here. And then we can see the back of our Spurs old tuners. They are not locking, they're just regular, and Dennis's Master Builder decal. All said and done, it is 7 pounds, 13.2 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. this thing already. I love the neck profile. It's nice and meaty without being too big. You just get to see all this crazy flame <laughs> while you're playing it. I told you I have a history of loving Cabernita style tellies and this is just giving me those vibes instantly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that we know all about this master built telly, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. If you're looking for a great twangy telecaster that has a great, nice, chunky neck to it, it's got flame up to wazoo, and you're not looking to be budget conscious, yeah, this is a really fun telecaster. As I was telling you in the demo, it's all about the neck for me. This semi gloss, I would highly suggest ordering it. Like, yeah, sure, you don't get quite as much flame travelage, but you still get enough. It works, but it just feels like a slow slightly worn in guitar. Nothing too crazy like Relict, but this thing ticks all the boxes for me for a good Telecaster. The Stratocaster we reviewed, it was so hyper-modernized, but this still feels like a Tele at the same time of being absolutely crazy and beautiful. So I guess it just really depends what you're going for. But anyway, Strong the Knights, I hope you enjoyed checking out these two very interesting Fender guitars with me. Again, these are in on consignment, so if you're interested in being the next owner of them, you can find them on my website, troglysguitarshow.com, or check them out on Reverb. Enjoy your new knowledge and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day and you might even enjoy this next one.